Hello. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to solve systems by substitution, right? So in the last video, we talked about how to solve systems by graphing, right? You can plot them on a graph. You just look where they intercept and then, you know, there you go. So solving systems by substitution is another good option instead of having to, you know, plug in infinitely many points to check every single point possible. So substitution is the best method when both equations are in a specific form, right? And in this case, that specific form is slope-intercept form. All right, so if you don't quite remember, right, hopefully you do, right? Slope-intercept form is our y equals mx plus b, right? And what the really important part about this is, right, is that, you know, we're going to use substitution whenever we have something where it's just like y equals on both of them, right? You could have an, a, an equation that might look a little bit different, right? You could have something where it's like A equals B, C plus D, right? And, you know, whatever it is, as long as both equations have the same variable on its own like that, right? If they both say A equals, then substitution is going to be a good way to go, right? So our steps, you know, they might look a little scary. They're a little bit wordy, but it's really not too bad. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set the equations equal to each other. All right, so we just talked about how they're both going to have like a y equals on them, especially if you look a little further down the page, you're going to notice, oh yeah, both equations are y equals. All right, we're going to set the other pieces equal to each other. All right? After that, we're going to solve for the variable, which for us is usually going to be x in this step. Right? There's only going to be x's left when we set those pieces equal. After we solve for x, right, then we're halfway through the problem, right? Remember that when we're solving systems, we need an x part and a y part because we're solving, you know, basically we're finding the point where those two graphs meet, where they are both solved at the same time. So what we want to do is we want to plug in that value we just solved for back into one of the original equations. All right, so we're going to go all the way back to the start of the problem. We're going to plug in whatever our x was into one of the original equations. And then our last thing to do is to solve for the second variable, which for us is usually y. Right? So when we're doing that, right, we'll talk a little bit about it as we go through the problems. Sometimes you can make your life easier. There's usually an easier one to plug it back into to figure out what that second variable is. Right? So let's take a look at one. I want to solve this number one by substitution. So again, the first thing that I'm noticing is that on both of these, I've got y equals and another y equals, right? So what's going on is that if y equals, let me use the highlighters here, if y equals negative 3x plus 24, right, and y also equals 3x, right, then that yellow piece and that blue piece should equal each other, right? They both are equal to the same thing, so they must be equal to each other, right? Um, if you're interested, this is something called the transitive pro or, uh, yeah, the transitive property in math. If two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal to each other, right? And that's always going to work this way for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm, again, I'm just going to take those two pieces and I'm going to set them equal to each other. So what that's going to look like is, you know, just say, oh yeah, the first one is negative 3x plus 24. And the other piece I'm setting it equal to is 3x. Right? That's our first step. Right? Just set those pieces equal, and then we're off to the races. Right? Now we need to solve for our variable, which the only one still hanging out in there is x. So to solve for x, I need to get all my x's over to one side. So that means that instead of having these minus 3x's over there, I'm going to add 3x to move them to the right side. I'll add 3x over there. Right? And if you're somebody that likes to put the little like divider line down the middle, go for it. Right? Um, if you don't like it, you don't have to. <laughs> so we're going to have 24 over there. Over on this side, 3x plus another 3x is going to be 6x. And then we need to divide to get rid of that 6 that's attached to the x, right? Remember that 6x is 6 times x. All right, so when we divide on both sides, those 6s are gone. We get just x, and x is equal to 4, right? So now that we know that x is equal to 4, right, like I mentioned, we're halfway through this problem, right? So this is half of our answer, x equals 4. The other piece that we need to do is we now need to plug this back in to one of those original equations, right? So we need to plug it back into either the yellow piece or the blue piece. And like I mentioned a little bit ago, there is one that's a little bit easier to do, 
right? Um, so a little bit of like, you know, bookkeeping when you're taking notes and going through these problems. I like to solve it out just like we did here. And then I'm going to try and, you know, kind of separate it with this arrow saying like, all right, I'm going to take this value and I'm going to plug it back in, right? What that does is it, you know, helps you keep your work a little bit more organized, right? You're saying like, all right, this was the first half of the problem. Over to the other side of this arrow is the second half. All right, so when I'm trying to figure out which one of these is better to plug this four back into, I just need to take a look at the equations, right? If I had a choice to either work with the yellow piece or the blue piece, what I'm thinking is that the blue one looks a lot easier to work with, right? There's no negatives. I don't have to add afterwards. It's just y equals 3x. So when I'm doing that, y equals 3x, well, you know, we know that x is now 4. So instead of an x, I'm going to put in a 4. Right? And notice how I put that in parentheses, right? As we know from the past, when you're plugging in something like that for x, it's not going to be 34. That's 3 times 4, right? Because it's 3 times x. All right, and then after that, 3 times 4 gives us 12. It's the other half of our half of our problem done. All right, let's see if we can clean this part up too. All right, and after we get there, we're done, right? We found an X and we found a Y. You could leave it just like that. Um, some people like to put, you know, the X, then the Y as a point off to the side and call that the answer that way. I'm fine with either one, right? If you just left it with what's in those blue boxes, perfectly fine, right? You're telling me the same information, right? Let's try another one of those out. So we're going to solve this one by substitution again, right? And again, the first thing I'm looking at is that we have y equals a thing and y equals another thing, right? So then these two things, I can set equal to each other, right? And solve it out that way, right? So when I'm doing that, you know, first things first, set them equal. 2x is equal to the other thing negative x minus 6. After that, what I need to do is, again, get all of my x's to one side and kind of start solving out for that x. So I'm going to move them all to the left, which means that that minus x is going to have to be added to get rid of it from the right side. All right, when we do that, we're going to get 3x over there. It's going to equal negative 6 over on the right. Don't forget that that negative sticks with that 6. And then after that, I need to divide to get rid of that 3, right? Because again, 3 times x, divide to get rid of it. I'm going to get that x is equal to negative 2. All right. And again, unfortunately, we're only halfway done, right? That's half of our answer. We still need to figure out what y is equal to. And again, the way we do that, it's not too bad, right? We're going to separate our work, start in on the second half, and then if you had to choose one of those equations to plug it back into... I would say that the first one definitely looks easier than the second one, right? So you can plug it into either one, right? We should end up with the same answer either way. But if you choose the easier one, you it will be easier, right? So why not? So we got y equals 2x. That's what we're plugging it into, right? Except we now know that the x is actually negative 2, right? And again, the parentheses are important here too, right? Because otherwise that would be 2 minus 2, which is 0. That's not what we want to do, right? That's neg that's 2 times negative 2. So when we're doing 2 times negative 2, we get negative 4. And then that's it, right? We have now figured out what x and y are. Boom, done, that's it. All right, so what we're really doing is we're just like solving equations with a little bit of a weird first step, right? You know, everything that's not this very first thing of, you know, set them equal to each other, right? We know how to solve all of this, right? We know how to plug things in and solve and figure it out, right? So it's really a lot of the same stuff you've been doing in the past, just with that weird first step, right? Let's take a look at another one, right? This one's a little bit tougher because it will involve a couple different steps when we're solving it out, right? But that's okay. Like I said, we've done this before, basically. So again, I've got y equals this chunk, 7x plus 25, and y is also equal to this other chunk, negative 5x minus 11. So again, first step, I'm going to set those equal to each other. 7x plus 25 equals negative 5x minus 11. All right, so if you wanted to give this part a shot, right, you're welcome to. If you wanted to keep on following along, also perfectly fine, right? So set my divider line down the middle, and what I need to do is I need to get all my x's in one place, and then get all my numbers to the other side. 
right? So I'm going to move all my x's to the left, right? That means that that minus 5x over on the right has got to go. So I need to add 5x to cancel it out. And again, do the same thing on the other side. All right, so 7x plus 5x is 12x plus 25. On the other side, those x's are gone, and we have negative 11 still hanging out, right? Again, don't forget that that minus is attached to that 11. All right, after that, since all my x's are on the left, that means I want to get all my other numbers to the right, which means that that 25, that plus 25, we're going to subtract it to move that on over. All right, remember that how, the way we move things across the equal sign is to do the opposite. So we're going to get 12x. On the other side, we get negative 36. All right, and then one step left, got to get rid of that 12. So we're going to divide by 12 on both sides. All right, so x is equal to negative 3. Cool. Halfway there. <laughs> right, and when, we, when we're saying halfway there, right, just because it's half of the answer doesn't mean that we have an entire other half of the problem to do. As you might have noticed on the last couple, the second half's a little bit faster and a little bit easier because you're just plugging a number in and working through it. So if my x is negative 3, I again need to look back at the original equations and see, all right, which one looks a little better to work with. Right, and I'm thinking it might be the top one, the one in yellow there. Right? The reason I would choose that one is because it doesn't have as many negatives. Right? I know that negatives can be a little spooky. You know, it's, it's pretty easy to make a mistake sometimes. All right, so let's go ahead and work with the first one, which is y equals 7x plus 25. All right, and again, my first step after you know, identifying which equation I'm using is that I'm plugging in that negative 3 where that x was. Again, parentheses are important. Don't forget them. After that, it's just a matter of going through it. It's piece by piece, right? 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. And then negative 21 plus 25, right? So again, if you imagine like an elevator, if you're 21 floors into the basement, which is a pretty deep basement, <laughs> if you're 21 floors down and you go up 25 floors, you're going to end up at positive 4. Right, and then there's both halves of our answer, and wha-bam, we're done, right? So again, I'm hoping this doesn't seem so bad, right? It's it's a weird first step setting these two things equal. It's kind of weird to have to, like, plug it in to figure out the other piece. But at the end of the day, all we're doing is we're solving some equations, and then we're plugging in some numbers and simplifying, right? We've done both of those things in the past. All right, so what I'd like you guys to do is try out 4 and 5, right? So pause here, give those a shot, see how they go, right? And then unpause when you think you got it, and I will talk through them in just a sec. So hopefully you gave that a shot, right? I'm going to kind of cruise through these a little bit faster so that you, know, you don't have to listen to me talk for forever. All right, so 2x plus 8 is equal to negative 5x minus 27, right? Starting off the same way, setting those two things equal to each other. Got my divider down the middle, and then I'm going to start by moving all my x's to one side. Alright, what I'll say about this is that if you decided to move your x's in the other direction, right, like if you decided to subtract 2x from each side, that doesn't mean you're wrong, right? Wait until we get to the bottom of here, right, see if you got the same x equals that I do. Right, because remember, when you're doing multi-step equations like this, you can move it to either side you want. All right, so as I'm going through here, hopefully everything seems pretty hunky-dory on your end. Let's make that 5 a little nicer. It's not that much nicer. Divide by 7 on both sides. And then we're going to get that x is equal to negative 5. All right. So again, if you moved your x's to the other side and you got negative 5 equal to x, right? same exact thing. Don't worry too much about it. Second piece, so we got to plug that back in. All right. I'm going to plug it into that top one, y equals 2x plus 8. All right, and when I'm doing that, I'm going to save myself a little bit of writing. If I know I'm plugging into the first one, I'm just going to replace that x right as I write it. All right, no need to write the, the thing down all fresh both times. Oops. Come on. Oops, that's why. It went off of the pin. <laughs> so negative 10 plus 8 is going to give us negative 2. 
I mean, if everything was good up until that last part with the adding with the negatives, right? Imagine, again, imagine it's like an elevator, right? If you're at negative 10 and you go up eight floors, you're still in the basement, right? But you're only two floors down instead of 10 now, okay? So for number five, I'll leave the answers for number four up there if you're still checking. Oh, you can just pause as well. <laughs> Sometimes I forget what's going on. So you got negative 3x minus 7 equals 4x plus 7 on this one. All right? So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my x's to one side. All right? So when I'm doing that, you know, let's move all the x's to the right side this time. Why not? Let's add 3x to both sides. Again, if you did the opposite, right? check and see, right? We might still be on the same track. It might just look a little different along the way. All right, and then I need to move all my other numbers to the left, all right, which means I'm getting rid of that 7 over there. So you get negative 14 equals 7x. We're going to divide both sides by 7. Then we're going to get that x, or, well, negative 2 is equal to x. x is equal to negative 2 if you swapped them the other way. All right. And again, after that, my only other step I need to do is to plug that on back in, right? If I'm looking at those two equations, the second one looks a little bit nicer because, again, it's got fewer negatives floating around. So that was y equals 4 times that x plus 7. All right, so y is equal to 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. All right. Ignore that little extra dot that I got there, right? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> all right, so hopefully those went all right, right? I know that sometimes these can be a little tricksy, right? But, you know, if you need to pause here and check your own work, right, go for it. If you still need to, you know, work out how the heck did we do that, be sure to ask in class, right? That's what we're there for. All right. These last couple, we're going to talk through pretty quick together, right? Again, just so you don't have to listen to me for actual forever. And they're going to start off the same way, but there's fractions involved, which I know are kind of freaky to some people, right? So let's kind of talk it through. So like I said, let's start off the same way. Right? We have one-third x plus three is equal to two x minus two, right? And the way that we want, or the way that I like to start with these at least, right? You don't have to do it this way, but, you know, fractions kind of suck sometimes. So what I like to do is get rid of them right off the bat, right? To have your first step be get, getting rid of fractions. So to do that, right, I don't know if you remember this, the way that we clear out a fraction, right, fractions are just division, so in the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this denominator here, right, that number on the bottom of the fraction. If I multiply everything by that number, it's going to help me cancel out the fraction. So I'm going to do that to start. I'm going to multiply everything by 3, which is why I put parentheses around the whole thing. All right. So as I mentioned, what it's going to do is it's going to help us cancel out that fraction. Right? You don't need to write this next part down that I'm about to write. If you want to do it way off to the side somewhere, that's fine. But you know, don't, don't write it where I'm going to write it because it's going to get in the way of your stuff because I can erase real easy. So when we're doing this 3 times that 1 third, what's really going on is something like this. Right? Remember that 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1. Right? And when we're multiplying two fractions together, right, the top multiplies the top. So the 3 times the 1 gives us 3. The bottom multiplies the bottom. 1 times 3 is also 3. Right? And then 3 divided by 3, right, we can simplify that. That's just 1. So when we do that first bit of multiplication, all we get is 1. So it's going to be 1 with an x. Everything after that is just regular old multiplying, right? 3 times 3 is going to give us 9. 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, right? So, you know, it looks a little bit different than what we started with, but kind of in a better way, right? <laughs> There's no fractions lying around anymore. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it out just like normal. I'm going to move all my x's to one side, move that 1x over to the right. I'm going to get that 9 is equal to 5x minus 6. Since all my x's are on the right, that means that that 6 has got to go over to the left. So we'll add that to do that. We get that 15 equals 5x. I'm starting to run out of room. 
We're going to divide both sides by 5. All right, and then last but not least, we're going to get that x is equal to 3. Oh, my. Oh, goodness. So I got bad news. We're only halfway there, right? That's half of our answer. All right. Just like I said before, it's not really halfway. Like we're, we're way more than halfway through. We're like 70% through. It's the last 30% of the problem. It's just going to be plugging that 3 back into one of those equations. So can you guess which one I'd rather use? <laughs> I would say probably the second one because there's no fractions. All right, so it's y equals 2 times that x, all right, minus 2. So as I go through that, 2 times 3 is 6, and then 6 minus 2 is 4. Put a nice little box around it to show that that's our answer, and we're done. All right, fraction accomplished. Uh-oh, I got bad news. These, <laughs> these both have fractions, right? So last one, we'll talk through it together real quick. We're going to start off the same way. So we got negative 5 halves x plus 10 equals 1 half x plus 4. All right. And like I said, just like on the last one, best thing that I like to do at least is to get rid of the fractions right off the bat. So I'm going to do the same kind of deal. I'm going to multiply. The only difference on this one is that we have two fractions. right? So we need a number that works for both of them. Right. So when we run into problems like this where the, these denominators are different, we'll talk about those when I see you during class because it's a little bit more of a process, right? But in this case, because those denominators are the exact same thing, we can just multiply by 2, right? It'll cancel out both of those for us, right? So when we multiply everything by 2, again, I'm going to show you the, how the multiplication is going to work on this first piece. Please don't write it right where I'm going to write it because you're gonna, it's going to get in your way, right? But just to kind of run through it, when we do 2 times negative 5 halves, right? Same deal as before. That 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1, right? And then when we multiply those fractions, the top multiplies the top. So 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 1 times 2 is 2. And then negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Right? So when we do that first bit of multiplication, what we're seeing is that it's just going to kind of cancel out what's on the bottom. We're going to end up with that negative 5 left over. Again, pretty much everything else is just about the same, right? Negative, or 2 times 10 is 20. 1 half times 2, right, when we get over to that other side, is just going to be 1x. And then plus 8. All right? So I'd encourage you to do is try pausing here, see if you can get what x is equal to. And then if you're feeling up to it, try and figure out what y is as well. You do need to plug it back in when there's a fraction. But pause here, give it a shot, right? Worst case scenario, you're wrong, and that's not that bad, right? It happens. All right, so hopefully you gave that a shot, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to move all my x's to one side. I'm going to, let's move this one x over here, right? Again, if you chose to move them the other way, nothing wrong with that. We might end up with the same thing at the end as long as everything's hunky-dory. Now we need to move that 20 over to the right to get it away from the x's. And that'll give us, what is that, negative, oh my god, my brain is shutting down, negative 12. <laughs> Alright, and then after that, divide both sides by negative 6 to get that x all by itself, and x equals 2. You kind of underestimate how hard it is to like write and do math and talk about it all at the same time. <laughs> Sometimes your brain just shuts down and you can't remember what you were doing. But anyway, we got there. X is equal to negative 2. Or X is equal to positive 2, rather. Sorry. And then, again, this next step can be a little funky. We got to plug it back into one of those original equations. Unfortunately for us, they both have fractions. Right? But if I'm still looking at, you know, which one looks less awful, I'd say the second one is probably our best bet. Right, y is equal to 1 half times that x plus 4, right? The top one looks much worse, right? It's got a negative, the fraction is bigger, it's they got plus 10. Oh my god, who can even think of a number as big as 10? Right, so as we're simplifying this piece, I'm going to zoom in on just that part. Right, 1 half times 2, we did that a little bit ago, right? 1 half times 2 is just 1. And then 1 plus 4, you guessed it, is 5. 
and that's it. That's all we got to do. Oops, and it didn't like my box, but that's all right. Y is equal to 5, and then we are done. All right, so I'm not going to lie. These problems are not, you know, super quick and easy, right? But if you remember what we've done in the past, right, we're solving equations. We're plugging things in and kind of simplifying, right? The only thing that's really new, per se, is just that first step of, like, what do I, how do I handle these two equations, right? The answer in this case is set them equal to each other. Solve it out. Plug the thing back in. Get the other one. Then you're done. All right. So, as always, be sure to ask questions if you have any. And I will see you next time. Peace out.